5 star global in cap rating, satin chrome finished dashboard, automatic headlamps, auto rain sensing wipers, cruise control, TFT LCD instrument cluster with turn by turn navigation, idle start stop function, multi drive modes, ambient mood lighting, variable key, nice, umbrella holder. Well, if you were to guess the car just by those features, you would expect it to be upwards the 20 lakh mark, right? Well, so would I. But I'm out driving the feature-packed Altros. <laughs> now, this is Tata's first serious attempt at a premium hatchback. And this segment not only competes amongst itself, but also faces heat from the hashtag trending compact SUVs. Well, let's dive straight into it and find out just how good the Tata Altros is. Now, before we drive the Altros, let us know what you think of it. Do you like the way it looks? Would you like to see us compare it with a similarly specced vehicle? Let us know in the comments below. Now, Tata Motors have been delivering some handsomely built cars over the past few years. But the Altros? Well, look at it. It takes things a notch higher and wears the brand's new Impact 2.0 design language. If you ask me, it is the best looking car in its segment and there are a lot of things to admire. I really like the forward stance on the front nose. It gives it a very interesting touch. Then there is this grille itself, which has these hexagonal mesh inserts finished in black. It all merges neatly into these backward swept headlamps. And although it looks like a single cohesive unit, it isn't, but it adds to the athletic front end of the Altros. The front bumper, on the other hand, isn't as sharply sculpted and has a rounded off finish to it. It wears these high set fog lamps that also houses those distinctive looking DRLs and extends those large wheel arches to the side to give it a very muscular look. I really do like those 16 inch wheels, yet the Altros demands larger, more pronounced alloys to add some excitement to the side profile. However, that's been taken care of by this gloss black belt line that runs under the windows. Dramatic, certainly, but a lot of potential customers might not like it. Another unconvincing design element is this hidden door latch. Visually though, proportions are spot on and the Altros certainly grabs attention, be it out driving on the roads or in your society's parking. It sure is one good looker. The backside of the Altros is where things start to get interesting again. It all begins with the rear three quarters. You notice these positively offset wheel arches that neatly merge into the bumper. Also, there is this tiny diffuser integrated in the bumper and it's a very nice addition to have. The interesting bits though are up here. There is this black treatment given on the boot lid which matches the front end treatment. It also sports the Altros insignia just under the Tata badging. The tail lamp housings and the lighting effect kill the vibe here. They do offer a three-dimensional effect, but it just doesn't match the overall design. The use of conventional bulbs rather than LEDs doesn't help it either. However, on a whole, it's a very striking car to look at. Now, the Altros just isn't a brand new car from Tata Motors. It also sits on the brand new platform, the Alpha Arc platform. And Tata Motors will be using it to underpin a lot of their future products and EVs as well. In terms of what you get, are these doors that open 90 degrees and they really do help with the ingress and egress of the cabin. For those of you wondering if it's a bit of a stretch to close them, well, you don't really need to open them all the way. It has a first and a second step before it goes all the way to the 90 degree position. And that makes it easier to operate. So I can just open it to here and then shut it as I like. Hear that? Now that is that solid build quality that Tata offers. In fact, the Altros here has been rewarded 5 stars in the global NCAT crash rating. So, top marks to Tata for giving us safer cars. Now, in terms of the design, the first thing that you would notice is all that drama and contrasting treatment has been left to the exteriors. The interiors take a rather conventional approach. Now, I'm not saying it's boring. In fact, there have been used multiple layers within the cabin. However, the switch is evident. The first thing to come to your notice is that satin finish on the dashboard. There are multiple layers to this cabin and I really like the placement of the floating 7-inch infotainment system. 
However, the dashboard begs for a bigger, crisper and higher resolution screen. A very interesting hazard switch, below which are these tiny controls for your infotainment system. Lower down, you have your aircon units that open up further space to put in your knickknacks. It's quite deep and it's very usable. Fit and finish has been improved, I must say. However, it still doesn't match its rivals in terms of minimizing the panel gaps. Well, there are a few good bits in here for the driver and you. To begin with, there is this flat bottom steering wheel. It's leather wrapped and it's really nice and chunky to hold. I really do like the feedback from these steering mounted controls as well. Then there is that part digital, part analog instrument cluster that has been carried forward from the Harrier. Now, it does take some time getting used to it, but there is enough information on display at all times. And I really do like the tachometer, the way it reads out. It's better than the bar representation that a lot of other tachometers use. I prefer this one over the others. What's really good though is that massive cooled glove box that's being offered. In fact, there are many storage spaces in the cabin to store your daily used items. Now step inside the rear of the Altros and the very first thing that you will notice is the amount of space that it has to offer. This is the widest car in its segment and it really does show back in here. Now there is good amount of space under the seats for me to slide my feet in. The driver's seat is set to my driving position and as you can see I have just about enough knee room. Under thigh support is quite good. The headroom here is a little cramped but otherwise um, it's quite a comfortable place to be in. I also do get adjustable headrests. There is also this central armrest, um, no cup holders in it though. And uh, there is a 12 volt socket, uh, a USB port has been given a miss and uh, you do have uh, two AC along with a blower speed control. Overall, uh, it's quite a comfortable place to be in. Seating three abreast for long journeys shouldn't be a problem. Again, there is that flat uh, floor and the flat seat itself that do aid in that. Now the rising window line does mean smaller windows for the rear passengers. However, visibility out from the windscreen, from the front windscreen is quite good. And overall for long distances, this is quite a comfortable place to be in. Now from behind the wheel, that diesel engine does seem to be well refined. There are a fair bit of vibrations that I can feel through the clutch pedal, but otherwise it isn't that intrusive. Now there is that typical diesel clatter, however it fades away very quickly as you pick up pace. Now it's only past that 3000 RPM mark that the engine starts to get intrusive and you can hear it within the cabin. However, you wouldn't find yourself revving it that high. There is ample amount of performance available down below and it's just adequate for it to perform on the highway and within the city as well. Now this gearbox doesn't complement that engine as much as we would have liked it to. The gear travels are quite long and the gearbox action is very sticky as well. A shorter gear stick would have helped and made things a little bit more desirable. Now the clutch on the Altros is quite light. However, the travel in the pedal is very extensive. Then there are those brakes. Although the bite is quite good and progressive, the pedal feels very cushiony and it's not very confidence inspiring when you're driving it enthusiastically. Now in terms of the driving dynamics, well, there isn't much to complain about, is there? This platform really shows its true color out on the highways or in twisty sections. And with this steering wheel combined that adds up weight as you gather speed, it is rather enjoyable and very engaging to drive. So this is the Tata Altros for you. It's a make in India car that features those boldly sculpted design lines that make it a looker, has a few segment first features and is also the only diesel option available in this segment as of today. Then there is that sophisticated Alpha Arc platform that opens up acres of room on the inside. It's not all praises for the Altros though. Refinement levels could have been better and fit and finish, although is quite an improvement in terms of at a standard Lack of an automatic option might be concerning for a lot of customers. However, Tata says they'll be rolling out a unit quite soon. So, should you really consider it? Well, there is a lot going for the Altros in terms of its design, safety, ride and handling, space, features, and even everyday practicality backed with good fuel efficiency numbers from the diesel mill. As a package, 
This ticks quite a few boxes and it sure is a worthy consideration in its segment.